Hey everyone, welcome back! I want to be clear that today's build is not my idea. This comes courtesy of the Warframe community in general. I was shown a Reddit thread two days ago about this kind of mag setup, Blood Altar Mag. Honestly, it looks hilarious and was extremely effective when I made my own, getting around 120 to 130 kpm. It just absolutely annihilates Steel Path, but what's important is camping the right room, since this is a camping setup that wants good sight lines. If you want to check out the original source and the meg discussion on Reddit, I've linked it in my description and pinned comment. This video will break down how to achieve the same setup in least investment possible, alternative options, and things to consider when using it. Do note this setup can have FPS issues if you look at the blender when enemies are dying. The Vacuum Cleaner Mag has one fundamental goal. Continue to drag enemies into the ever-growing blender. This is why Blood Altar is useful. You can cast Magnetize on any enemy, but once the original target dies, while it continues to trap gunfire, the Magnetize no longer pulls enemies inward. Blood Altar makes enemies invincible so that it cannot die when you cast Magnetize on them. Since Blood Altar has equal base duration to Magnetize, the bubble will continue to pull enemies in across its entire duration. Wall of Life also accomplishes this amazingly well with one extra bonus. So long as we're within the well radius, which is easy since we build for range, we're also completely immune to status effects, removing the need for Prime Sure Footed or the status removal of Rolling Guard. Rolling Guard just becomes optional for iframes as needed, therefore you can pick between Well of Life or Blood Altar, since both already heal. The advantage Blood Altar has is being able to cast 3 of them, whereas you can only have one well active and that Well of Life only lasts 12 seconds by default instead of 15, like Blood Altar. How much this matters depends on your playstyle, since camping means you may not need 3 separate Blood Altars for 3 magnetized bubbles all at the same time. Then, the next step is dealing damage to the bubble. Certain weapons in the game have infinite projectile lifespan and body punch through. These are primarily Nataruk, Dread Incarnon, and Paris Incarnon for the good options. Other ones work well too, being Tenet Archiplasmor and Latron Prime Incarnon, which are stronger infinitely scaling setups, but require you to shoot into the bubble more often. Any of these choices I've listed are top tier today, but really it's magnetized. So even if you don't have these weapons, they will still work well. Tinnit Arca and Latron and Karnon work uniquely. Arca can hit infinite times, thus can kill anything despite not having infinite projectile lifespan. Whereas Latron and Karnon armor strips in an AoE on hits, making it also infinitely scale. However, the three bows, Nataruk, Dread, and Paris can only hit enemies once and do not armor strip. Therefore, I will resort to Gas Hunter Munitions for those bows, letting me kill via Slash to build up lethal gas clouds that continue to outlive their enemies so we deal massive immediate damage to future victims. We'll be looking at the Tenet Arca and Latron and Karnon builds for this mag setup today. I would not recommend using Dread or Paris and Karnon, because they require headshots to activate their Incarnon gimmick, whereas Nataruk already has access to the special shot properties by default. Thus, the third build included will be Nataruk. Blood Altar and Well of Life also freeze enemy bodies where you casted them, particularly if in air. This is important because an aerial magnetize creates better sight lines on 3D tiles that have multiple elevations of engagement, like this void tile spawn room, leading to better directional pulls and less enemy stock on walls. Pull is native to mag and allows us to pull enemies into arbitrary spaces in midair to enable this. You cast pull first, then blood altar or well of life on a random enemy in the clump. Then cast magnetize and spam Nataruk, Plasmor, or Latron shots into it. Let's look at that mag build. The goal of today's build is to make a functioning vacuum cleaner mag setup that does not rely on the invigoration and arcane helmet the original reddit showcase included, to make it as accessible as possible. The aura slot is actually free. Now, strength is not super important on the setup, but does have one hidden effect and you cannot completely dump it. It determines how strong the pull speed of magnetize is when enemies are within range. Therefore, we have multi-augmented slotted to ensure we don't have some weak sauce pull speed as the mission continues and you stack more strength. If you're playing more active and willing to cast pull, then strength really doesn't matter much. This build is quite chill, so if you skip augmented, you don't really need much else either. 
maybe Arcane Blessing if you want to play an HP tank setup, but perhaps your footed is not needed if you're using Well of Life, but recommended if you use Blood Altar due to lacking status immunity. The most important stats on this setup are Duration first, followed by Range. Magnetized Discharge increases our bubble to almost 10 meters radius and doubles as a protective globe against enemy fire while you camp the edge. And if you miscast on the wrong enemy, well you can hold cast to detonate it, which will kill stuff but let you recast again on the actual Blood Altar or Well of Life target. This even works to stop Eximus gunfire, but will not redirect their abilities. Now, you will have to barrel stuff them with your Nataruk if they walk inside of the bubble to make sure you can hit them to knock their overguard off, whereas outside the bubble you can shoot them normally. A massive magnetized bubble and camping the edge should minimize how often you take hits, letting molt efficiency stack to plus 36% duration easily to reach 290% overall, extending magnetize and blood altar to 43.5 seconds and well of life to 34 Point eight. I've chosen to subsume Blood Altar over Manx 4. This is because all our weapon options today are already infinitely scaling and do not benefit from Fracturing Crush stripping armor off. Also, Fracturing Crush hits through walls but stops enemies from moving is not exactly what we want, because it'll prevent them from getting closer to the Magneton's bubble to get within pull range. Casting pull can fix this, but I would just rather avoid this to start with since the armor strip isn't useful here. Polarize is casted with its augment because it fully restores all shields including two allies, and also produces slash particles for a massive magnetized bubble if you for some reason need it. I find this is a lot more useful for utility and survivability on mag, but as I said since neither your 3 or 4 are really part of the core rotation, you can pick either of the abilities to keep. Focus school and operator stuff is completely irrelevant so you can skip over that. The next part is checking out our weapon builds for Nataruk, Tenadar Kaplasmor, and later on Prime in Karnon. Remember that other weapons are viable, but the list is nearly endless, so I'm just showcasing the best options. Nataruk is first, and because it has infinite body punch through, as well as infinite projectile lifespan. While it cannot re-hit the same enemy multiple times in the bubble with the arrow itself and has no AoE, it has very high damage per hit, can use slash well from 100 munitions, and only requires you to shoot a few times at the start of the bubble and produces lethal gas clouds that can re-hit enemies multiple times and linger even after kills. We don't even need a bane because you can compensate by just shooting extra shots into the bubble. I usually shoot 3 or 4 times and it's enough. Gas with Hunter Munitions, Slash procs build up Merciless so that gas clouds can quickly become lethal. Gun CO is multiplicative on Nataruk, which stacks easily due to proccing Gas, Puncture, and Slash for plus 240% final damage. Then 180% crit with Fire Rate for comfy DPS perfect shots. Now, the Tenadar Kaplasmor has a limited lifespan, but is uniquely allowed to re-hit the same enemy with the projectile itself when it passes through them again. This leads to many more hits than intended, which is obvious from the obnoxiously loud projectile collision sound it makes when you shoot it into the bubble at enemies. We take a Toxin Progenitor so that we can play Viral Hunt Munitions. Bane is optional again, and you can slot Prime Reload Speed or Shotgun Barrage if you don't want it since Plasmor generally kills in a single shot due to re-hit mechanics. Keep in mind you will have to shoot this every few seconds, unlike Nataruk only needing a few shots at the start before AFKing for 30 seconds. Latron and Karnon is again different from the other two. It cannot re-hit the same enemy, but it produces an AoE every time it does hit an enemy and also rebounds several times before expiring. This AoE is allowed to hit the same enemies again, which is important because Latron is able to strip 20% of the final armor per puncture proc on the AoE due to in Karnon perks. This results in it instantly shredding all armor off from AoE spam and multi-shot, letting the heat proc stack up and burn everything to death. Because it requires puncture procs, by the time you have 5 puncture procs to remove 100% armor, you probably also have 5 heat procs, which is far more than enough to kill. And this is all from a single shot. To maximize this, we add 0 elements to Latron and focus on just stacking crits, status chance, and multi-shot and then the rebound bounces. This preserves the 50% puncture and heat weight on the AoE on a 78% status chance setup. And there you go, the Vacuum Cleaner Mag build, courtesy of big brain setups from the Reddit community. Please do feel free to check out the original source as there are some cool ideas and alternative builds discussed there, as well as further tweaks and feedback from the original build crafter. The playstyle is very simple, as I said just find a room to camp that has good open space and allows good sucking sightlines at elevation. 
pull enemies into midair, cast Well of Life or Blood Altar on a random enemy in the group before they fall down. Then cast Magnetize on them, shoot your weapon of choice into the bubble, and watch everything die. Rinse and repeat. Cheers. If this is your first time watching, feel free to leave like or better yet subscribe. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. 79.5% of you are not subscribed. I try my best to get you new information out always, as soon as possible like I've been doing with the companion update and more. Stick around if you want to see interesting memes and builds on a nearly daily basis. You don't miss out on any of that, do you? That'll be it for this video. Thank you all for watching and see you all next time.